25th verse. He said, the deluded world does not know me. Because of the yoga maya, the illusion born of the union of three gunas. It is all the play of gunas. He's saying here. Yeah. Everything in life is nothing but a reflection of your mind. The world that you experience is a reflection, is a projection of your own mind. Whatever is the mind so are your experiences, so is the world. So, and the mind has these three natures of sattva, rajas, tamas, sattvic, rajasic, tamasic are the three flavors of the mind. So it is not wrong to conclude that everything, every experience, the entire world is nothing but flavored, filtered, conditioned by the play of your gunas. So it is your own gunas and their combination that creates a window through which you see the world in a particular way. I see the world in a particular way because of the constitution of my gunas. And it will be very difficult for me to expect you to see the world the same way because your constitution of gunas is very different to my constitution. I am not saying anything is right or wrong. It is just that the perception is defined by the gunas. So you have no choice but to consciously change the constitution, change the proportion for the better so that your experiences, your interpretation and the perception of the world becomes better. There's no other way. Therefore, we are always advised to keep improving your yourself, keep changing yourself, which means you change the, the character of your gunas from tamas to rajas, from rajas to sattva. I'm only talking of the three gunas here because he says the entire world does not know me because you're all caught up in these gunas, he says. The one who has transcended the gunas, a state of perfection is described as trans sattva, transcending sattva. So once you have transcended the sattva, once you have gone beyond the, the highest of guna, the sattva guna, that's when you reach a state of perfection. And to which we said you must consciously strive to locate areas of your tamas. First and foremost, you must know where is tamas, what is tamas. Locate it, identify with it. As we said, tamas as inaction, we also said tamas as. Remember, we define the law of inertia. An object will remain in motion or will remain at rest until an external force is acted upon. So if you become rigid, if you don't 
change the course of your action, if you don't adapt yourself to situations and circumstances, it's being tamasic. As they say, you go through a beaten path, means you keep doing the same thing again and again, it's a tamasic nature. So identify areas of tamas. Now the interesting point is a tamasic person would not know where he's tamasic. You would not know. So a person who is tamasic doesn't know that he's tamasic. And he is not ready to receive a higher knowledge. The tamas, the ignorance creates a shield blocking any higher knowledge coming his way. It's a, it's a catch-22 situation. I don't know how you're going to break that, 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 that trap you're getting into or you've got into. To the extent I'm tamasic, I do not know. I don't recognize that. And the only way I can correct myself is by identifying areas of my tamas. And I do not know the areas of my tamas. I also don't know how to find a solution to that. So don't ask me, then how, sir? I don't know. So also you must identify areas of your rajas. Rajas is nothing but you get excited, you get, you go through the fluctuations, you go through extreme attachment, you get obsessed, you become anxious, you become desired, all that you do not know. You're not able to identify areas of it, I just, So I don't know how you do it, but you have to get rid of your areas of rajas and tamas, increase your sattva. Ultimately, you break the shackle of the gunas, of the triangle, which creates that pluralistic phenomenon, the plurality that you experience. This is what we had left with the last session we did, All right? From all what I said today, if you can hold on to that point, that a tamasic person would not know his areas of tamas. So you would do well by identifying those areas of tamas. Like an ignorant person would not know he's ignorant. As we say, a person who's ignorant thinks he knows everything. So how do you get over that? You got to find out. I'm, I'm leaving it unfinished, incomplete, so that it makes you think. Like they say, it's question of, it's not being perfect. There's nothing as perfection. It's more of being conscious of imperfections. There's nothing as perfect state. Perfect state is realization. There's nothing as a perfect state. You reach perfection by only becoming conscious of your imperfections. And to the extent you, to that extent you wouldn't know where are your imperfections. Others can easily identify, they can clearly see where your imperfections are, but I don't see it. It's interesting. Yes, Reddy Garu. Okay.
try again to yeah, yeah. yeah. Pranam Guruji, uh, I don't know if it's the right time for me to raise the hand on this subject uh, in the starting of the class. Uh, when we're mentioning about Tamasik Rajasik and Sattvik, uh, like as you just mentioned that uh, others can identify easily our uh, gunas. Similarly, we identify somebody's gunas and uh, more on Tamasik, where we're trying to correct them, where we're trying to put efforts in uh, and address them to change for a better way. And the most of the times, uh, more than success, failure is uh, evident because we will be not successful in making them understand and making them to correct their path. Is it something like we let that go as in a karmic, it's your karma, you live and you own way. Is it that is coming in the picture? Is a karmic uh, thing also? Because when we know that somebody is really, really doing wrong and you know the next step is going to put you into the great trouble, and that you could have been with your maturity, but you are a little elevated in your understanding on the subject. But even then, the people doesn't just brush aside your opinions and suggestions, either it could be children or it could be friends or it could be employees. But they face the consequences. But that is, is something like you have a mirror in front of you that it's going to happen, but you are absolutely helpless. So can that situation be convinced uh, self saying that it's your karma? And it, you live and face the issues. Is it the right way of understanding, Guruji? See, karma is often said after you perform the action, not before. I hope you are able to. I hope I have understood your question. You are asking that you no, clearly my, my... see. Yes, Chris. Go ahead, please. Yeah, the, my, my point of that, when we know that somebody's tamasik, their actions are going to create a challenge or it's going to be in a wrong path. So when we guide them, when we uh, mentor them with our experience and exposure and whatever maybe the wisdom we have it, People continue to do so, their actions, and face the consequences. So I'm talking about, is that is the nature of the person's karma that having been got the message in advance, or I mean to say before the action is going to perform, there is a caution and there is a guidance has come, but you ignored it. And he performed that action and that he has to face the consequences. So how do you call this as it? Is it is a karma? because of his very strong in Tamasik or whichever may be the gunas which we attribute. Hope I made it clear. Are you asking why the other person doesn't heed your advice? Yes. No, it is, as I said, it's, it, it is, uh, it's very difficult, as Shakespeare says, to lend the ears. The problem is Tamas. Tamas is ignorance. It, it, it builds a, a shield around you and you don't, and that's the end of learning. So that's the, one of the most difficult things. So uh, if you feel obliged, you should give your views, but remember, you got to keep saying, apparently they keep saying it is my famous statement. So because others have said it's my famous statement, I should repeat it. I have got nothing to do with it. What have you got to do with it? When did you come into this world? Did you bring them along with you? Tell me. That's too good. You didn't but, bring uh, them along. Yeah, but uh, being associated and we have been seeing, uh, then, then if it, we get disconnect for every moment, then there is no value of our own presence in this world. There's also true we can still. That the only way your presence can be made and felt is by elevating yourself, not by constantly advocating to others. Knowing well, as you presuppose in the question that you your views may not be heeded, then why am I venting out? Why am I giving my views and opinions? So to that extent, if you withhold, and let them seek it from you. Rather than you giving it out, let them seek it from you. 
the moment that happens it has a a greater bearing a greater relevance in their life because they want it yeah again going back to the fundamental principle knowledge is always taken never given so do not give it if you can refrain from giving you will uphold the principle of this knowledge which is never to give let them take yes guru ji that makes it more you are upholding the knowledge the sanctity is preserved otherwise people scoff at it people belittle it people what's that word carpet it belittling and carping and scoffing you know so the more you don't give the more you will be valued the more you give anast will lose its value so almost is almost a test to yourself can you withhold what you know so no no rush into giving it up can i can i have one small extension to this question guru ji yes sir so like you you are being teaching we have been listening particularly let me take my as an a case study an example and uh, if i don't really put into the action and converted the knowledge into a wisdom okay can i consider that is my karma that in spite of being listening to you and listening your, to me your can, we, can i bring that karma picture into this that's where my i i i i wouldn't bring into that's why i was in hesitant yeah. when i earlier commented on the answer i wouldn't bring the element of karma you have a choice you choose not to and having chosen then you are subjected to the consequences you can't say karma is predetermined no nothing is predetermined yeah if you choose to heed to this knowledge and uplift yourself that's your choice if you choose to brush it aside and not take this opportunity seriously also a choice got it got it See how many times have we been told you got to get up at brahma muhurtam yes in spite of that you don't get up you have decided to make a choice you have chosen not to get up so thereafter you will not evolve spiritually that's a choice you have made what have i got to do with your choice sir <laughs> yeah you are a free being i have got nothing to do with it so you by saying that i keep my blood pressure under control and check <laughs> otherwise my blood pressure gets shooting up because i have no control over what you do isn't it? what choices you make you choose as you will as you wish so i have no say that matter but if i continue to get up i continue to do my sadhana and whenever an opportunity arises i mention of it whenever knowledge is sought i clarify it and leave it at that rather than me probing into your life and every other day i keep messaging you did you did you get up today very soon you will block me who is this fellow constantly bugging me asking where they got up he is too concerned of my life Later, better he be concerned of his own life, and then you will politely say, "Guruji, M Y O B," huh? will yes, you say, please. sir? No, I don't say that. say that. So, ah, no, you I, always I, said yes. Now no, you no. can't take back the word. You always <laughs> said you say that. <laughs> I'm watching your statement. I'm not watching my wife. <laughs> no, 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 I understand. I understand. So does it convey the message, sir? Yes, clear, Guruji. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, we'll take up verse twenty-six. Veda ham samati tani vartamana ne charjuna bhavishya ne chabhutani mam tu veda na kashchana 
वेदाहम समतीतानि वर्तमानानि चार्जुन भविष्यानि च भूतानि माम तु वेदन कश्चन now these are the last set of verses in the seventh chapter verses 26 to 30 he's talking about the wise seek and gain brahman the topic 26 to 30 wise people seek and gain the brahman now here in this verse he says so arjuna i know aham veda vedaham वेदाहम मीन्स आई नो वेद अहम आई नो समीता वर्तमान भविष्या च भूता ई नो द बींग्स ऑफ द पास्ट समीता मीन पास्ट वर्तमान द प्रेजेंट भविष्या द फ्यूचर बट माम तु वेदन कश्चन वेद न न मीन्स नॉट बट तू बट नो वन नोस मी मोस्ट इनॉक्यूस मोस्ट सिंपलेस्ट वर्ड्स फॉर द मोस्ट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मीनिंग आई डोंट नो हाउ टू एक्सप्लेन दिस आई आई सीक योर पेशेंस सीक योर कॉपरेशन इन ट्राइंग टू explain what this is so when he uses the word i whenever the shastras use the word i i means the pure consciousness whenever we talk of knowing whenever we talk of knowing is knowledge knowledge what is knowledge knowledge is nothing but any knowing is nothing but a conditioning any knowledge is conditioned by object being and thought just write this on please any knowledge is conditioned by an object being and a thought any knowledge i repeat any knowledge is conditioned by an object being or a thought so when you say i know there's a difference between when you and i say i know when the lord says i know there's a difference now let me ask this question some of you may be aware of this argument but let me ask those who may not have been familiar to this idea vengatra garu venkata apara garu i made your i cut short your word for my convenience sir please forgive me eh? is there any difficulty today to okay uh, gayatri ma could you yes yes sir so what would be the convenient name to call you sir to address you hari om guru ji that that you will address me that way but how should i address you sir Hari Om Guru Ji. Hari Om Sir, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you please repeat your question, Sir? But you must clarify my concern first, Sir. Yeah, tell me. My my concern is how do I address you, Sir? Make it upper row. Make it simpler for me, Sir. Then make it upper row, Sir. Oh, that is so sweet of you, Sir. You know, so we shall address you as upper row, Sir. Yeah. Upper row, Guru. A simple question, Sir. If I were to ask you, are you conscious of? 
How would you answer that question? Are you conscious of? Are you aware of? Guruji, when we are talking about the conscious and awareness, in my perspective, you know. I am, uh, sir, Aparagaru. Yes, sir. I am not talking of consciousness or awareness here. Mm -hmm. I am just, okay, in another in sense, but in, in simple terms, are you aware of? What would be your reply to that simple question? Yes, to an extent, the things around me. Things? Around me. Okay. Just for example, if I were to say, are you aware of a lizard behind you on the wall? No. And then? To an extent. That's the reason I said to an extent, I am aware. But I was only asking about the lizard behind you. No, 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 you no. did not know. No. Therefore, if I, when I ask you the question, are you conscious or are you aware? You would throw back a question at me back saying, sir, of what, sir? Are you yeah. conscious of what? Isn't it? That's because right. I can't leave a question open-ended without giving a clarity to what I'm asking. Am I right? Very right. Therefore, now come back to the, to the point I made. Any knowledge is conditioned by an object, being, being or a thought. So when we have knowledge, it's always knowledge of something. Am I right? Yes. So when you say conscious, now you say, oh, yes, sir. Thanks to you, you mentioned to me that there's a lizard behind. There's actually no lizard behind. But just for example, I said, oh, yes, I am aware of the knowledge. I have the knowledge of the lizard behind me. So there is two things here. I am aware. And then there's a knowledge of. Isn't it? The two things. Am I right? That's right. Yeah. So the concept here we are saying is the pure consciousness is I know. That which is conditioned is the object, thought or being. Sir, can you please explain me? Condition means you're talking about a particular thing or... What do you mean? So we are talking about conscious and awareness of a particular thing or object. So can you please elaborate on the word condition? Condition is there is a, a union between the pure consciousness and the thought. So when the pure consciousness, which is I, plus the thought, let's say of an engineer. You say, I am an engineer. So what are you doing? That pure I am is conditioned with an engineer, defines you, you say, I am an engineer. Now, what is the difference between I am vis-a-vis -vis when you say, I am an engineer, I am an Indian, I am a waker, I understand. So all these statements of understanding, not understanding, being an Indian, being an engineer, being a sportsman, all these are qualifying elements which condition the pure, unconditioned consciousness I. So the I is the pure unconditioned consciousness, which is conditioned by these conditioning elements. So all the conditioning elements together define an individual who is defined as a conditioned consciousness. So who is Mr. Aparao? Mr. Aparao is nothing but conditioned consciousness. Who is Vinay? Vinay is nothing but conditioned consciousness. Now, how does the equation of the conditioned consciousness arise? The pure consciousness plus the thoughts and the vasanas of me create the individuality 
that I am, which is the conditioned consciousness. I repeat, Ashama, don't worry, I'll repeat, Ma. The pure consciousness plus the thoughts and the vasanas equals the individuality, which is the conditioned consciousness. So PC plus vasanas slash thoughts equals CC. The pure consciousness and the conditioned consciousness, they are two things. So when we say condition, the conditioning elements are objects, beings, and thoughts. So when you have knowledge of, it is these elements that condition the pure consciousness. That is what the word condition means, sir. Sir, again, you said uh, vasanas here. So I thought that the vasanas are different from the object being or thought, or probably more connected with thought. Is it, it is. Yeah. In fact, thought originates from vasana. Vasanas. Okay. So thought is an expression of vasana. Therefore, I said vasana and thought are the same thing. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. So the pure consciousness, which is the so now go back to the to the verse. The verse says, I know the beings of the past, present, and future. Now, there's a difference between I know when he says in the verse, vis-a-vis -vis when you say you know. When you say I know, when I say I know, I am talking from a conditioning state, conditioned state. When they use the word I know, they are talking from the pure unconditioned state. It's very difficult to explain. So all the knowledge that we have, all the knowledge that we claim to have is nothing but object, full knowledge. Just capture these words and we can expand on it. All the knowledge we have is what he's saying indirectly as object, full knowledge. Means it is conditioned by our object being our thought. It's object, full knowledge. But that state of Pure consciousness is objectless knowledge. It's either objectful awareness or objectless awareness. When you have objectful knowledge, it is conditioned consciousness. It's objectless knowledge or objectless awareness, it is the pure consciousness. So when he says, I know the beings of the past, present and future, he's only saying the consciousness was present in the past, the consciousness is present now, the consciousness is present even in the future. In that sense, he says, I know. Sanjay Bhai, are you following Sanjay Bhai? Hari Om Guruji. Um, I am following along, but I feel that it's it's a complicated one. I'm just trying to digest it as I go. Um, so I felt I've I felt comfortable up to the statement of pure consciousness plus the vasanas being the conditioned consciousness. Um, but I'm still catching up with the idea of knowledge. Um, where knowledge is objectful, that's the conditioned consciousness. And knowledge without, knowledge not, um, which is not objectful, is pure consciousness. But it still feels slightly fragmented. I'm just waiting for it to slot into, slot into place. 
see in a, in a simpler equation we say god plus vasanas equals man isn't it the definition of a human being is nothing but the god which is the pure consciousness plus the vasanas in you isn't it so when you remove the vasanas what happens man equals god isn't it yes now the first statement i said all knowledge or all knowing is conditioned by object being or thought so sanjay is the individual is conditioned by the various thoughts the various objects the various knowledges isn't it yes so what you are is objectful knowledge isn't it is that knowing that you have is conditioned by the various objects which is nothing but the various now you use the word object being or thought as synonymously okay objectful knowledge is having knowledge of something so what is conditioning when i answered aparav garu i said when i say i am an indian that indian is qualifying i am am i right yes engineer is qualifying i am, I am. isn't it yes now you take away the conditioning elements what will remain i pure I am consciousness remains. the pure consciousness i am remains so objectful knowledge is condition consciousness objectful awareness is condition consciousness objectless knowledge objectless awareness is pure consciousness so what you got to do is take out that conditioning element of the object thought or being from the equation that is when the pure consciousness remains now sanjay remember me interacting with you a long while ago in fact your initial days when you came for the classes we spoke and i took this example now what do you see just to make a pencil what is it that you see can you describe oh i see a blue pencil with an eraser on the end what else you see i see you i see the background i see the murti i am only showing this to you now okay you're only showing that okay um ah i see the light ah ah, ah. <laughs> that is what that is what i'm talking about what yes. you are seeing what you are seeing is the light plus the object isn't it yes the i reflected light the object there is light between let's say the the lens the camera and me there is light that's why you see me the same object which i place in between the camera and me you are able to see the object because there is light i remove that you are not able to see the light isn't it so what is seen is object plus light yes similarly what you are experiencing is object plus consciousness is object full knowledge what we are saying is remove the object from the equation what remains is not zero but the pure consciousness so when he says i am i know the beings of the past he says the consciousness existed in the past it is not the same sense when you say i know and i say i know and when the text is saying i know they are two different things the world of difference in how we use the word i know and what they are saying i know when we say i know it is knowledge of i'm concluding ah huh? sanjay to make it easy for you when we use the word i know we are having knowledge of when they use the word i know 
it is the pure consciousness pure consciousness it is the knowing principle it's so innocuous but yet so so yeah. profound and it's it's almost you're lost for words as i said for a moment i didn't know how to how to capture it and how to mm. how to present it mm. because it is beyond the very thought mm. example when you go into deep sleep you are having object less experience isn't it yes there is no object at all in deep sleep sound sleep and that deep sleep is also known as do you know what's the synonym for deep sleep no in the context anybody knows what deep sleep in the context means ram ji so shukti is just a sanskrit word sir it's synonymous for deep sleep is what i'm asking ayyo yeah ma ala champa estnar into ushama why are you killing people the fellow is just sleeping and you all trying to kill that fellow there some is everything okay sir ram garu little oh, meer padukunna book sleep alone tonight with a key lock from inside sir please yes sir hmm? i take always sufficient precautions uh, ah, sir. Yeah. oh my god <laughs> that, that is the reason you are very wise sir no? <laughs> Shama, look at him. What he's saying, huh? Yeah. Huh? sir. What is the synonym for deep sleep, sir? It is not trance, uh, sattva. It is not aparagori. It is not samadhi. I should I arrest that is, because I think it is in between. It is a semi-consciousness. If you are, uh, I mean, I'm just uh, <laughs> throwing my ignorance at you, but uh, uh, I feel that I instantly, you... I instantly knew that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> because if you have reached pure consciousness then that is no longer a deep sleep but if you are in deep sleep synonym in this context would be that you are on the journey so you are somewhere in between sir no? even a fellow who is highly uh, materialistic and least spiritually evolved also can go through deep sleep sir deep sleep is not a measure of spiritual evolution but it is a measure of how you forget the uh, objects and beings around you right can it mean that no no it it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that at all it's just that i i will give the technical definition as to what these three states waking dream deep sleep are but before i get to that the question the i was asking is synonym for deep sleep where there are no thoughts present is also known as anandamaya kosha oh. anandamaya kosha means you experience anandam which is bliss which is a relative experience which we experience in deep sleep which a man of realization will experience when he has permanently uprooted all his desires is vasanas but in deep sleep temporarily your vasanas are not available they are not manifesting mm. so when your vasanas do not manifest you are in the deep sleep state you become the deep sleeper hari ji if you are there kindly capture sir when you are vasanas are not manifesting you are in the deep sleep state you become the deep sleeper i don't know which state hari ji in If Arish is in deep sleep, don't disturb him. If he's in dream, disturb him, please. So when your vasanas are not manifest, ah, uh, thank you, sir. We woke him up. Arish, thank you for waking up, sir. So when the vasanas are not manifesting, you are in the deep sleep state. You are the deep sleeper. When your vasanas are partially manifesting, you are in the dream. You are the dreamer. When your vasanas are fully manifesting. you are in the waking state you become the waker so the waking dream and deep sleep states are nothing but no manifestation partial manifestation and full manifestation of your vasanas that's all they are and self self realization is a state of no vasanas 
eradication of asmas completely eradicated yes sir sir can i ask one question please so in this um, verse so when he says that i know the beings of the past present and future does he mean that uh, he knows uh, what is called as trikalagnya i mean he he understands past present and future what happened what is happening and what is going to happen uh, it does, that doesn't mean that is it it doesn't mean that sir what he is giving in this verse he is giving the definition of reality the okay. definition of reality is that which persists this is the word we got to use reality is that which persists reality is that which existed in the past which exists now which will exist in the future so when he says i know the past present and future it only means the consciousness exists in the past you can take past as early this morning it can be a few days a few weeks your past janma also it was there the consciousness existed the consciousness is very much existing now the consciousness will exist will exist into the future so it testifies the test of reality so reality is that which persists at all periods of time so when he says that he is only giving the definition of reality now after i take up the further clarifications i will prove that how our experiences do not fit into the test of reality i'll yeah, come to that okay. in a while in a while but that reality is a reflection of again the three gunas and everything so what is around us is reality right or it no. is only the image it is only the maya yeah it is maya okay. what you are experiencing is what the masters masters call it as maya it is illusion it okay. is not real they say isn't it yeah that we okay. understand isn't it okay okay sir. right thank right. you yes i think apar agaru you wanted to clarify something sir guruji thank you in fact it got clarified uh, over a period of time when you are discussing thank you okay right now what got clarified sir that it is we should know i am well, little inquisitive don't worry yeah when we were talking about uh, you know i like that equation what you are given uh, the pc plus cc and i was thinking like you know uh, i thought uh, god is uh, you know basically Uh, all pervading when we talk about trigunatmika uh, he ha- he is all three gunas then he is uh, 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 gunatita then uh, he is nirguna so we define in various fashions but when you talk about the past future and all it's nothing but just pure consciousness that's what i understood it is not like you know as we discussed it's not uh, you know trikala gnana that is past present future it is just pure consciousness from which you know the whole thing is manifested that's what i i understood correct me if i am wrong no no i think your understanding is is correct you know it's correct for now i think you can you would do good by just keeping all these this all principles based on which you you they become the foundation for your further studies so once you have these concepts and how they all fall into place then it becomes easier to understand you know so uh, so far as this concern you are absolutely right your understanding is correct please hold on to that okay thank you but thank you right now uh, ashram is asking when we say i know it is the limited knowledge or the knowledge which you claim to know when you say i know you are talking about what you know so it is a conditioning knowledge yeah isn't it so that is limited knowledge that's limited knowledge yeah it is something which you have gathered some thoughts yeah 
what is your knowledge man knowledge is nothing but thoughts and ideas isn't it so you pick up from an idea from an external source which is reading a book or listening to a guru but it's just an idea that comes your way yeah yes in fact i will go to the extreme and say when you all come to the class you are all are pure you all are pure consciousness and what i do i keep bombarding you with all these thoughts and i make you all impure i make your condition consciousness that is what i'm doing because before the class you are empty there's nothing in your mind you are blank you are the pure consciousness and then after that what shivaji i throw all these ideas at you and uh, you know i don't know whether you can use that word you know uh, rajima please uh, we can edit this section gayatri ma from the from the class later on uh, that sanskrit was manangatti what do you call what does it mean is it a wrong is it a, is it a slang or is it something i don't know is it a vulgar word what is it uh, rajima we can't hear you guruji manangatti is actually mannakatti means a, a ball of mud which is okay. worthless uh, okay it's not it's just one which is thing. exactly i'm doing correct manangatti da i am all throwing all these ideas at you all and making you all condition conscious the pure you are in the pure unconditioned state and all the knowledge you learn become conditioned only when you go and say you are ready to get conditioned this vinay not all guruji <laughs> only huh? those who are ready to get conditioned not all for many it goes above don't don't, below. don't tell me you are switched off mentally nay aga padangingo ha oh sir i am physically here mentally switched off not listening to anything what guruji is saying not like that no <laughs> not like that not like that <laughs> right you are agreeing you are purer than you than a point that is the problem that is different you understand but do i understand is a different equation that is a different question you understand is not my understanding <laughs> <laughs> right 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 so ashama are you following guruji my limited knowledge would also include the experiences that i am going through whose experiences are they what is experiences are my, they memories yeah, my experiences so that so is limited it is yeah. still limited it's still condition it yeah. is conditioned by your vasanas conditioned right. by your thoughts conditioned by your memories all that is conditioned okay thank you yeah yes venkatram ji hari om guruji hari om sir i just wanted to you know ha have two questions one was of course the earlier one but in an anandamay kosha when you are in deep sleep and there is no manifestation of vasanas so human beings and animals and all are same now why are you comparing yourself to an animal i don't understand no normally you know suddenly, they don't you, suddenly your love for them has increased after the trip to pen <laughs> no not that i was generally say, thinking between animals and human beings the only thing is you know we are a little more conscious and then we try to have some kind of a control but in that state everybody is equal in terms of deep sleep ha huh? i mean if animal is also in deep sleep it will also not do anything i mean we are like so if you just take Hey, to answer your question yes you can say that you know we are we are just like a, a piece of wood or stone lifeless okay there is no expression of life where there is a bristling expression of life in a waking state we are awake all of this becomes yeah like a piece of wood dead wood okay you are still not declared dead you are still alive but yet you are inactive yeah. everything is shut off you don't feel you don't perceive you don't think you don't act 
Why? Because vasanas are asleep. It's like, sir, I give you a seed. Now I'm presenting a seed to seed works. Okay. Look at the audacity of me. You know, I'm going to the very source and giving him a seed. Sir, the seed is nothing but a vasana and understand a vasana as unmanifest. Seed is a vasana, unmanifest. Okay. Vasana always is unmanifest. So if you can just capture, Hariji, just kindly capture this. A seed is a vasana. It means it is unmanifest. It also means deep sleep. Seed is a vasana, which means it's unmanifest, means deep sleep. All these are one and the same. Are you able to relate to these four as yes. the same? Yeah. When the seed starts sprouting, it sprouts and it becomes a sapling and a plant. <clears throat> That is a thought and a desire. So a sapling or a plant is a thought and a desire, which is the dreamer, a full grown tree, which yields fruits and flowers, is the action, the waker. So a seed is a vasana, which is unmanifest. When it manifests, it becomes a sapling or a plant. It becomes the dreamer. thought or a desire. You are the dreamer. I'm just drawing a comparison. And then there is the Tree. The tree which yields which is the fruits and the flowers, it is the action which is the waker. So vasana, thought, desire and action. So when you are in the state of vasana, you are in the deep sleep. When you are in the state okay. of dreaming, you are only thinking of at the subtle level. Physical body is absent in the dreamer. There is no physical body. But when you come to the waking state, you are the waker, there's action. The same vasana, which is asleep, becomes a, a plant. So even an animal, <clears throat> when it goes to sleep, it is not expressing in action. It is, its nature is not manifest. Even a ferocious tiger, when it is sleeping, it is not ferocious. Its nature is away it from is it, nature. isn't it? Yes. It is just sleeping. Okay. All right. Second question. Okay. I thought you said two questions, no? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, previous question, but I don't know whether it is appropriate at this time. It was further to what uh, Srinivas Reddigaru was alluding on this, uh, you know, the modern day performance appraisals, feedbacks, and all, which happens in a corporate context and also happens largely with the people. So going by what, you know, we have heard you not now, but earlier too, you said that, you know, one should not keep giving feedbacks until and until asked, which partly is true because that is what even we are also learning now. But the whole system will then, you know, how will it work? I mean, I'm talking more from a corporate context in terms of, uh, not many people will come to see or probably in our enthusiasm, we would also like to complete that annual ritual of giving and taking feedbacks and stuff like that. So how do we put that in a corporate context in a manner which is acceptable to both? Of course, it's a completely different topic and subject, but I thought, how do we put that into practice in some form? Yeah, We can take it up uh, otherwise uh, in a separate this thing also. <clears throat> Yeah, that's it's, it. It's a, it's a very uh, interesting question to put it in a corporate perspective. 
because when you present the the same point that knowledge is not uh, given it's taken from a corporate perspective it is not being personal you don't get carried away by other person's action even there you are expected to maintain a sense of objectivity and detachment to the whole happenings like you're having a, a meeting of your entire team you don't get carried away by the good bad ugly that's happening in that conference room because each one brings their personality each one brings their performances each one brings their own challenges onto your table but you got to deal with it very objectively but in the larger interest you have to bring out what corrections are required and if another person doesn't receive your advice constructively it doesn't topple you or unsettle you let's say your finance manager is not taking certain feedback which is to be taken seriously because it is causing a certain ripple effect in the organization and you pull up as a ceo you pull up your uh, uh, finance manager and give him a feedback in the larger interest of his work in the organization one thing is it is not that you are he is seeking it but yet in the larger interest you have to present it objectively it's not that you become impulsive and get carried away with that advice to that extent you are withdrawn your objective so you remain unaffected even when the advice is parted and if the person doesn't heed that advice also you don't lose your composure to a large extent you 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 take necessary course of action tomorrow if he is not performing if he needs to be replaced you will do it objectively no hard feeling but as a leader if you are able to keep that charm by not getting carried away large extent you will find yourself attractive your actions attract others towards you that's a matter of uh how evolved you are people will always come up and seek advice from you haven't you experienced that sir yes we do we do experience it <clears throat> thank you guru ji thanks yeah right no oh, said so raman ji has clarified he saying you are only pointing out the sin but not the sinner there is slight difference there okay right yes hari ji hari om guru ji Yes, sir. Why? Why should we go to corporate world? You can take one's own family. The husband may be uh, in this field uh, for many, many years. The wife may be, may not be, or among the four children, two ch children may listen to the father, go in this direction, and two may not go. For example, Mahatma Gandhi, one of his children, he had gone astray. no i can uh, think along with him ramji because he is being he is man of corporate field he is only trying to relate the teachings to his field of work more in terms of his making it as an applied philosophy so uh, yeah, i can I, i can relate to it no you you can you can take the family also as a as a as a corporate uh, entity in its own way may not be a large corporate but a small corporate a nucleus corporate i know k i know cases where uh, one of my friends he used to talk always uh, in his it's a very very senior uh, corporate fellow and he used to talk always vedanta whenever there was official problem corporate problem he try to implement using vedanta 
finally he lost his job because the whole uh, he was he, he is my very close friend because everywhere he used to apply and he used to talk only about vedanta <coughs> so what are you suggesting vedanta yeah, is I, not applied for corporates or what no 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 i i no the, i feel what you have told uh, initially is the right thing that these are all uh, thing when it is not uh, thought for it is better that we don't uh, we don't try to uh, to to bring this into the um, into the uh, group because uh, even the knowledge uh, to get this knowledge also we should be the, the person to whom we are talking he must be prepared yeah yes no i think uh, there is no concern or ambiguity about it you know so yes yes sir anything else hari ji no that's right it. thank you right so coming to the point which i have told when i clarified with ram ji that the verse when he says i know the beings of the past present future is giving the description of the reality right but the prasad garu are you following sir looks like you have transported yourself to a higher stage sir actually my granddaughter was disturbing me so i thought i'll escape from her and come to the terrace <laughs> <laughs> i saw suddenly suddenly you transported yourself higher so i was wondering <laughs> unless you want to fly kites and listen to the class that also is fine sir <laughs> right Ga gone so, are those days uh, gone are those days yes yes you know in fact we were just telling what is that mere piece of colorful paper what excitement what Uh, what amount of anxiety and all shouting that. yelling <laughs> just a piece of paper and, and, and the enjoyment we get when we cut off the other fellow's kite <laughs> let's not talk of that sir <laughs> <laughs> sir what we are trying, i Achha. wanted you to <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know <laughs> we should be positive thinking <laughs> no 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 not at all you that's all part and parcel of uh, having fun there so the yeah. reality sir we we if you remember, recall we said reality is that which exists at all okay are you are you do you recall what we said the definition of reality hmm Okay, let let's ask Raman ji, Raman Garu, what is the definition of reality, sir? Can you please advise your friend? Sir, you have to unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Uh, knowing that the being is in the past, the present. and the future sir whom are you telling the lord is telling sir, arjuna i am not talking of the lord telling arjuna i am talking about raman telling badri two friends are talking <laughs> how would you talk to your friend gurti ha huh? uh, how to put it sir how do you address your friend i am asking simple question sir hi badri how are you <laughs> that's all ah uh, very formal ah uh. when there is when the friendship become very close how do you greet sir uh, please forgive me badri garu hi are ba are badri would you say <laughs> that we do that we do that you do no so okay in a very friendly note can you please describe what is the definition of reality to badri ji sir papa chara mom momata mun sir i will assume as i am i will assume as i am ramun and i talk to you are badri no, reality ha mogo team le do yeah it's uh 
I'm just trying to do some drama. Let's get to the no point. Sir. <laughs> I am I'm not you. I am doing drama, sir. Let me cut it short. <laughs> so, sir, reality is that that is existed in the past, which exists in the present and exists in the future. Now, if you go by the known experiences, we go through the experiences of the waking, dream, and deep sleep. None of these fit to the test of reality. When you are in the waking state, you are in the present now. The waking state did not exist the previous evening or the previous night when you were sleeping. It will not be there tonight when you sleep. So it exists now. It did not exist in the past, doesn't exist in the future. The same applies when you are in sleep. The dream world is real. It is not there in the waking state. It is not there in the deep sleep state. The same applies to deep sleep. So there are moments that experience doesn't exist, isn't it? So since it is not available at all periods of time, it is not reality. Okay, let's stick to one state. Let's stick to the state of the waking state. When I had come into your life, let's say 20 years ago, Hariji, if I had come into your life 20 years ago or 30 years ago, you would have been in your, in your working career. Hmm? You would have been a young man trying to set up, establish and expand your business. So I ask you who you are. You say, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman. You say, I'm a young man. You're a young man. You were a young man 30 years ago. If I were to come into your life 50 years ago, what were you? You were a teenager. I come 60 years ago in your life, you are a young boy, you're a child. So when you're a child, I ask you who you are, what would you say? Simple question, Hariji. Avalo analysis went out. 60 years ago, come into your life. You have to unmute, sir, please. I would say I'm a child or a boy. 60 years ago, you said you're a child. Then you said you're a boy. Then you say, I'm a teenager. And then you would say, I'm a man who's trying to prove and establish my worth, what I am. And now you would say, I'm a retired person. I don't want to say I'm an old man, but just for discussion's sake. Rajima, I think we can say that, no? I'm an old man. Now, even confined to the waking experience, at every stage of your life, you have been describing, defining yourself to be something. Has that persisted with you? It has changed. It has changed. The moment anything changes, what does it prove? It is temporary, it's illusory, it's not the reality. It is not the reality. So rather than, so when he says that which persists in all periods of time is real, every other experience of your, yours doesn't fit to that definition of reality. That is all he's saying. So you go into each state and examine, and all the three states that you know, they don't, it doesn't exist, it doesn't persist. What exists, what persists is the consciousness in all the three. It also is there beyond the third into the fourth state called the Turiya, the fourth state of consciousness. Therefore, the reality is that which existed in the past, present, future, in the waking dream, deep sleep, and is also in the state beyond it, the fourth state. And that state, Sanjay, is object less awareness. It's not objectful, it's objectless awareness. That pure, unconditioned consciousness. It's all 
very beautiful terms, but it's just that the gist of it, you must understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, these are all terms that just embellish it. Okay. I will have to leave it at that. We will we'll come back. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om